Hey everyone, this is Vinny from Ari. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how we use the fog parameter in our V-Ray material to create colored glass using V-Ray 5 and 3ds Max. So the way this video is going to work, I'm just going to show you how I set up my scene. Then I'm going to move on to talking about the basic functioning of the fog color in 3ds Max, and then we'll create real quick this vintage piece of Murano glass using what we learned. So just to talk about my scene, I have a basic glass model that I created, and I added some noise to that to give it some variation. I also have an infinite backdrop here. And as for the lighting, it's pretty standard for lighting glass. I have two lights in the front giving me these nice reflections. I have some lights in the back to give me some rim light. Then I have some black cards, which are going to give me these black values that define the edge. Pretty standard when lighting glass, just to give you some nice contours to your edge. I know these black cards look a little bit funny, but honestly, if you're in a real photo studio, there are black cards lying around everywhere to get the correct shape on your product. And then I also have a light that is lighting my infinite backdrop. Okay, now we can get right into talking about our material. So I'm just going to open up my material browser by pressing M on my keyboard. So when creating colored glass, I always like to start with the more physical parameters of the glass material and then moving on to the colored value. So always starting with reflect and glossiness first. So what this material looks like here is I have a black in my diffuse, which is pretty standard for glass. I have a kind of near perfect values for my reflect and glossiness, nothing exactly white or one. I also have for my refract near white and near perfect for my glossiness. I thought those values match this reference pretty well. And then for my IOR, I have a value of 1.8. Now glass typically has a value of 1.5. I decided that the IOR of this looked a bit higher. Crystal is going to have a value of 2, so I thought somewhere between 1.5 and 1.8 would work fine. Also to mention, I will have IPR running the entire time of this video, just so we can see a live update of our material. And because of that, I've turned off rendering for my material preview. So you're not going to see this preview update while we're making edits here. Okay, and then to move on, let's just start talking about the fog color. So fog color is essentially going to change the color of your glass. There are only a basic few parameters, but I know a lot of people get tripped up in how they work exactly. So I hope to explain it clearly here. So the first value is your fog color. Now this is just going to change the color of your glass. Essentially, I can put in any RGB value here, and that's going to change the color of my glass. Now something to note here already is that you will notice that the thinner parts of my glass, such as the top part here, are going to be a lot lighter than the thicker parts of my glass here. Now this is by design with the basic parameters of the fog color. This simulates how colored glass really does work. The thicker parts are going to have a darker color. But don't worry, you're going to be able to change these to match exactly what your reference shows. So again, just by simply picking our color, we can already get to a good start. Now let's talk about the fog multiplier. This is going to control essentially how opaque or light your fog color is or how dark or light it is. So as I crank this value up to say a value of 2, you'll notice that my fog becomes a lot more dense and darker. As I crank this down to say 0.5, you notice that my fog color becomes a lot lighter. Now I can move between 0, which is going to have no fog color at all. So essentially the way the fog multiplier works is that it tells V-Ray how much light the fog should absorb. So as you increase that value, it's absorbing more light and becoming darker, whereas a value of 0 is telling V-Ray that the fog should absorb no light. So you're not going to see that fog at all. So you can do a value of like 0.25 to get a really light color and then a value of 5 to get a really dark color to that glass. Now let's talk about that thick and thin issue here. So you'll notice even still, the thinner parts of my glass are going to have a much lighter color than the thick parts. Now this is controlled by the fog bias parameter. As I increase the value of my fog bias, it's going to spread that fog out a lot more evenly. So I'm not going to see as much of a difference between the thick and thin parts of my glass. So for example, if I set my fog bias to 1, and let's just crank down our fog multiplier to uh, 0.5 maybe, you're going to see I'm going to have a lot more even color throughout the thick and thin parts of my glass. Now the opposite is true if I go below 0. So if I set this to negative 1, 
you'll see that fog color is really going to be concentrated in the thick parts of my glass. And I can go even somewhere to negative 5 with this. And you're going to see it's only going to be concentrated in the thickest parts. And of course, still, I can increase my fog multiplier to higher values. So let's just set these back to our default of 0 and 1. So that's essentially how fog works with your V-Ray material. Your fog color is going to change the color of that fog. Your multiplier is going to change how opaque or light that fog is. And then your fog bias is going to change whether or not that's located throughout your model or only in the thick parts of your model. So now let's just analyze quick how we would make something like this. So obviously we would need some type of gradient map to get this effect. And it's really as simple as that. So I have a gradient already made in my material browser here. So I've made this. And just to show you what this looks like, I'm just going to apply a blank material to my model with that gradient plugged in. And then you'll see what that looks like in our renderer in a second. So essentially all it is is I have a gradient that goes from white down here. Then you can't really see it, but underneath it ramps up to this dark value. And then it kind of ramps uh, back to a lighter green on top here. And essentially plugging this map into my fog color and then reassigning that value is going to get me most of the way there with defining this fog value. Of course, it took some time to UV map my model and get these colors to be correct. But essentially, that was all I had to do. And now the fog color works pretty well for me. I just have to adjust some basic parameters here. So just looking at my reference, it looks like the color is mostly concentrated in the thick parts of my glass. So why don't I crank down my fog bias to be, say, negative 0.5. So it's going to be concentrated in more of the thick parts. And then it's definitely a darker, more opaque value. So why don't we increase this to 2 to start, and maybe 3. Maybe we can go all the way to 4.5 here. And I think that gets us pretty close. So essentially, just by having this gradient map plugged into my fog color, I can get this very complex looking reference right away. So those are the basics of how you use your fog parameter within V-Ray 5. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out our YouTube channel where we have more tips, tricks, and tutorials on CG visualization software such as V-Ray and Rhino. You can also check out our school on our website at re.school where we have full courses on CG visualization covering topics such as architectural rendering, product rendering, and much more. Again, this has been Vinny from Ari, and I hope to see you in another video.